What do you think about the strategy, someone who is a lean mass hyperresponder, uh, lowering their ApoB down to you know a level that we would say is optimal whilst waiting for data? I would say work with your doctor, work with your family, <laughs> learn what you can. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I have kind of a stock answer now because any more, I want to keep repeating and emphasizing that even when people are saying, Dave, you're somebody I trust. You seem to be smart. You seem to, you know, have some advice that I could probably follow. I say, I've actually worked really hard at linguistically removing as much as I can, any hinting of advice, because I'm really trying to be just a researcher, I'm trying to just go get this data and then bring it back. And the more I can do that, the more I can emphasize that what you do about your high LDL, that's really the cart. The horse is what's going on. What's, is this a problem is what I'm most interested in. Now I will say this, I found an answer that seems to help get me out of the feedback loop which is that I now defer to Dr. Budoff and Dr. Krom Nasir, who, by the way, have a lot of overlap with Dr. Cromwell with regard to if somebody goes on a ketogenic diet, they see their LDL go high. They are very interested in doing imaging next. If they do imaging and they're satisfied that they're at low risk, then they're interested in letting it be a decision for the patient past that point whatever it is their, their next choice is, but to continue monitoring. But what do they say if the patient says, okay, I have no plaque, but am I at increased risk of laying down plaque? I, I've only just adopted this diet. Like I want to kind of know what's going to happen in the next five, 10 years. I think most every doctor that I'm aware of outside of the low carb context, at least at those, at those levels would say, oh, well, if you're just asking me, then I am not comfortable with it. They would, they would sound like Dr. Cromwell, generally speaking. Now, again, this is me giving advice. This is me telling you what people tell me. Obviously, uh, Nick Norwitz and myself, we get asked this a lot because we have untreated higher levels of LDL, but I immediately follow up by saying, we also have CT angiography. <laughs> He's gotten a CT angiogram once, I've gotten it twice, and I emphasize that this is uncharted territory. That's exactly why we have to do this research. Do you we think some it. people, I, really, I appreciate your position, and I think previously I've, I can put my hand up, I've probably misunderstood you or, and maybe even misrepresented. Um, so I feel like I'm, I'm understanding you more, which is good. That was one of my goals. But do you think some people hear that and think, Dave's an incredibly intelligent guy, you know, and he's happy with it. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to follow suit and perhaps ahead of the data, you know, just continue to adopt this diet where their ABO be super elevated and take on some risks that they're unaware of. Well, to that extent, I said what I said right after I mentioned where Dr. Budoff and Dr. Uh, Nasir are in that I meet that first context they described. If I have imaging and I'm low risk, if Nick Norwitz has had imaging, he's at low risk, at least with regard to the plaque that's present currently, right? And we're actively monitoring it. Then to that extent, we kind of meet what it is that their position would be in the first place. Uh, I will say that um, Nick, I believe, and I don't mean to put words in his mouth, but I think he'd be fine with me mentioning this. He said that he might feel differently if he had gotten, you know, CT angiogram and it turned out that he did have rapidly progressing plaque, then he might take other steps. And then you're making that choice based on the fact that you don't seem to have had plaque progression. Um, but is there any, I know you're working on a few studies, is there any outcome data at all that looks at this phenotype? In my opinion, currently, the data that show metabolic health as associates to cardiovascular disease outcome seems to suggest, all else considered, it associates with lower risk at a population level. But the key to emphasize here is population level. So if you're talking to a clinician and they're saying, wait a sec, 
you as my patient got hung up in a group of people who feel confident that they're safe because a lot of their friends seem to be safe. And by the way, this isn't just in the low carb group, as I'm sure you're aware, there's many people who are on plant-based diets who might, for example, feel that they're at low risk strictly because they're on a plant-based diet, <laughs> right? And because they have friends who tout highly their cardiovascular health being on a plant-based diet, decide that that's good enough for them and don't pursue further avenues when they uniquely seem to be in an, in an unusual circumstance. And that's why I bring that context to bear. I think the difference though is there is quite a lot of outcome data supporting that dietary pattern for long-term risk reduction. At a population level. At a population level. That's, that's why I'm driving into that. Is I think you and I agree, I, or I'm certainly betting that Dr. Cromwell agrees, it's all populations until it's a patient. <laughs> And then when it's a patient, it's their specific context. And then you've got to care a lot But more. I guess it's a game of probability, even at a population level. Sure. Right? It's like, you know, I, it's possible I'm not going to have that because I'm an individual. I'm not going to have the average response that you see in a study. It's possible. But if I'm, you know, playing probability, then I'm likely to have that outcome. Yeah. And you, sh you should care about probability. More likely, more likely to have that outcome, I should say. You should care about the probability of the studies that you see for the spectrum of data that you have that applies to you in the population that you're in until you can get more distinctive data. That's literally the origin. Which brings us back to you and your position saying there's a lack of data looking at this phenotype. Correct. And that, and that's, that's why like it's, it's such a challenge to walk this line because I genuinely, I genuinely want to get through to folks like yourself and say, look, this does not have to fall into this false dichotomy between different camps, if you will, that have these different opinions. Yeah, I, it, I really don't want to be part of a camp. Yeah. <laughs> I've decided that. <laughs> it's not that fun.